Lego Builder's Journey is a title that just hit NVIDIA GeForce Now, and it's a game that I've been excited for ever since it was officially revealed just three weeks ago. So when NVIDIA asked whether or not I was interested in covering the game for GeForce Now, I had to say yes. All the gameplay you're seeing in the background has been captured off a of GeForce Now instance, and yes, the game does feature ray tracing support on GFN. And before I begin, I need to make one thing clear. The game is available on GeForce Now on PC, Mac OS, and Chrome OS, but not available on Android, Android TV, or iOS devices. Aside from that, I want you to rest assured that I will be giving you my completely honest opinion about the game and I'll tell you everything good and bad about it. And let me begin by just saying that there really is a lot of good here. The game, first off, is just aesthetically pleasing, pure eye candy. And with ray tracing on, it makes a really good looking game even more impressive. How each Lego piece shines and reflects off another is just great. And if you choose to zoom in and take a closer look at all the Lego pieces, you can even see the micro scratches on each piece. I think it's more than fair to say that they absolutely nailed the visual style here, and it's very nostalgic and brought me back to the days of when I used to play with LEGO myself. But hey, visuals can only get you so far, how's the gameplay? And on that end, I'm happy to say it feels really good to play. Once you figure out how to control and move around LEGO pieces, it all kind of just clicks. Literally. I'm playing this right now on GeForce Now on PC, and I'm using my keyboard and mouse. The controls are simple. You click to pick up a piece, click to rotate, and hold down the click to actually place and drop it. You can right click to rotate the camera a bit and get a different viewpoint in case you need to, and that's about it. The game's simple but very intuitive and easy to play. As for what you'll be doing in this game, well, it's pretty much a puzzle game where you have to get from point A to point B. To achieve this, you simply have to use the Lego pieces at your disposal and make sure that your character can actually hop from one piece to another. At times, you have to think and work your way around it to make sure that they can actually reach and make it safely, but overall, it's best described as a puzzle game. As for when it comes to difficulty, most of them are pretty simple, some of the later stages do get a little harder, but I never felt like I got stuck for too long. Now let's talk a bit about the story. Yes, there is a story here. Sort of. You actually have to piece it together much like the Lego pieces you're playing with. My interpretation of it is that it's a father-son story where the son slowly begins to learn about how he can be creative and resourceful with the Lego pieces and then goes on to his own journey. It's never something that's flat out said to you, and if you're the type of gamer who requires a strong narrative to actually enjoy a game, well, that's not really what it's doing here. Like I said, there's many ways people could interpret what's going on and what the overall story and meaning to the game is. But I do think it's a neat touch that it's something you kind of have to piece together much like LEGO pieces themselves. Up until now, I've covered the visuals, gameplay, and even the story, and I've had nothing but good things to say about them for the most part. But now it's time we tackle on the biggest negative this game actually has, and that's length. You can absolutely go through this game in just one sitting. It takes about an hour and a half to two hours to beat it on average, I'd say, and you're not going to squeeze much more out of that unless you're the type who just enjoys simply replaying levels. And truth be told, I don't think that these levels are really designed to be replayed that often. It is important to note that the game is priced at $20. Now for some, I can totally see this being a huge negative and $20 being way too much. For myself, I don't mind paying it, that's about what I pay to go watch a movie and that's how I justify it. But to each their own. Not everyone is going to be happy hearing the length of the game, especially for the price tag. But truth be told, I really do think that's my only complaint with the entire game itself. All I really want out of this game is more of it, and whenever that's the case, it's usually because the game at hand is really good. I hope to see a sequel to this, or even a more expanded idea about it. Unlike most LEGO games, this isn't one trying to let your imagination run wild to build whatever you want. Rather, it's a more focused experience that is making you get creative to figure out a solution. And I really do hope that's a concept they do try more of. Now when it comes to the GeForce Now side of things, I just need to point out that the reason I haven't brought it up yet is because it's played flawlessly on it. I had absolutely no problems or issues playing on GFN, and it was a fantastic experience being able to crank all the settings to high and actually turn RTX on. So if you're at all interested in this game, or maybe you own it, but want to see what it looks like with ray tracing support turned on and max settings, well, GeForce Now is a fantastic way to try that out. All in all though, to wrap this up, the game is fantastic, it definitely gets my recommendation, and I would highly advise you to check it out if you're at all a fan of LEGOs. 
If you have any remaining questions, do leave them down in the comment section below, I'd love to answer them. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out, and if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. Thanks for watching, and as always, this has been The Virtual Cloud, giving you the latest and greatest on everything cloud gaming and VR related, and until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.